Jeff Boatwright, Cuban, probably the single dumbest client I've ever represented. And I've represented people who are mentally incompetent. Right. <laughs> so his sister is Cinnamon Monzones. Okay. Her husband, Jeff's brother-in-law, is Carl's Monzone. One of the guys who uh, drives for the Wells Fargo, you know, the, the, the armored trucks. Yeah. Say, listen, I got the easiest gig in the world. We just got to bum rush this gate, snatch all these duffel bags and get out of here. There's no cops. There's no guns. You're in, you're out, and you got duffel bags of cash straight out of Goodfellas. I don't even think they saw Goodfellas, but the opportunity was right there. So Carl's is sort of the mastermind of it. Carl's just gets off the boat from Cuba a little while earlier, doesn't speak English, and is a total scumbag. He's alive, and he's going to see this, and you're a scumbag, Carl's. So they, they all have a role to play. Matt, they go in, and they steal millions of dollars in duffel bag money. Right. They don't even know how much. The Fed's like, it's $7 million, it's eleven. It's way more than that. You know, they owe, this time they underinflated. Right. The money was never counted. They count it here. They just come over and they weigh it and they take it to the Federal Reserve Banks and they burn that money and issue clean dollars. Pure, he got away with it. Nobody knew who did it. Nobody. The FBI did not have a clue. It was the perfect crime for people who didn't have two working brain cells. Just Jeff was born here, but he's of Cuban descent. And Carl's had just gotten him from Cuba. Millionaires, overnight cash money. That, that, that in and of itself is a problem. Right. Giving, giving stupid people a bunch of money, illegal money, oh. they very quickly blow it. Yeah. Or do, start doing stupid And I'm going to tell you exactly why you're so right. Okay. So Jeff, Jeff likes cane. He likes strippers. Jeff's about 400 pounds. It's pure lard. Jeff is a fat slob. Right. But he, uh, you, know, you got to like Jeff. If you knew Jeff, you liked him. He was just a likable idiot. You couldn't help it. And so Jeff starts taking his money, and he's going to Gold Rush, which is a 24-hour titty bar in Miami. And he's just staying in the VIP room for three, four days straight with Coke and strippers going through 50, 75, 100 grand a day, you know, doing stuff. So Carl's, his brother-in-law, says, you know what? Look at this, what he's doing. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fake a kidnapping of him. So he hires a kidnapper who's not really a kidnapper, but he's going to kidnap Jeff, pretend he's holding him for ransom. Meanwhile, he's calling Carl's for the ransom money. Carl's is going to pay him 25 grand, but he's going to tell Jeff, hey, Jeff, I had to put up a million dollars of your money to right. get you loose. Do you understand? Yeah, he's yeah. already got millions. This guy just kind of gets off a boat and he's got millions and millions, but he wants another million dollars. Because so he, he feels like that guy's wasting his million. But, but Jeff can do whatever he wants his money, right. right? All right. Remember now, they had totally gotten away with it. Right. I know this because later on when they get caught, I talk to the FBI. They, they didn't have a clue. So we'll call it kidnapping number one. Carl's hires a kidnapping crew to kidnap Jeff, hold him in a warehouse, beat him up a little bit, and he's going to pay him 25 grand, and then they're going to let Jeff go. He's going to go, look, Jeff, I had to pay him a million bucks. You got to give me a million of your share. What a piece of shit, right? He's doing right. this to his own brother-in-law. They do it. Jeff's into weird shit. He's into the Santeria stuff. He goes to a hotel with a couple of strippers and a suitcase with 400 grand cash. They, of course, put a slip of Mickey in his drink, and he passes out for a day, and when he wakes up, he's got no clothes, he's got no briefcase, the hotel's kicking him out, he's wrapped up like a toga on the banister of the bed sheet. Carl, come and get me. Whatever, this is how dumb Jeff is. And then he believes somebody put a, you know, the only way to find those girls and get his money back is to pay a Santa Maria priest. He pays her 180 grand. She's going to do chicken bones or whatever they do. God. Jeff's absolutely going to blow through his money in two years. All seven million, he's going to blow right through it. Blow right through it. But whatever. It's his money. He can do what he wants. He played a part. The kidnappers realize, you know what? This, this little family here has got some money. They don't put two and two together, Matt, but they suspect something. 
Yeah. Let's really kidnap him this time. So the first kidnapping was a stage kidnap. The only one who thought it was a real kidnapping was poor Jeff. The same crew that kidnapped him the first time says, let's really kidnap him. So this time they kidnap him and they call Carl. They call Carl's. I said, you got some money. You better pay the up or we're really going to hurt him. Carl goes, I don't give a what you do. I was just that's a mistake. Kill him, right. He's like, oh, we got to do something. So they're torturing Jeff. They're pulling his fingernails oh. off on the phone. Jeff says, let me call my mom because I'll say it. A lot of Jeff's money was buried in her backyard in coolers. Right. Yeah, you can take that money and put it in a bank. So now he's got to call mom and let mom know, mom, you need to, you know, go 10 paces from the big oak tree, turn right, four more paces, dig a hole, and you got to find money. And these guys are pulling my fingernails off. Well, as you know, every single kidnapping case automatically goes to the FBI. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're in Podunk, USA, if it's a kidnapping, they go, and they don't need wiretaps, they don't need search warrants, they can go up on the wire, the sun pass, everything. They don't need anything. If it's a kidnapping, they can wiretap everything. Right. So now, it's a kidnapping. It's a real kidnapping. Right. Carl's doesn't give a Cinnamon doesn't know, his sister. Poor Jeff's getting it. Now he's really getting the shit beat out of him and hurt. And this crew's like, we, we want our fucking money. Like, we yeah. know you got, I don't know what you got. They didn't know it was the left hand's eyes. But you got money and you're going to pay up. The mother, of course, calls the police. My son is kidnapped. And it goes up on the FBI. So now the FBI is tracing the phone calls, listening to everything. And that was the first time it came up. These are the left hand side guys. Right. If they didn't do the kidnapping, never would have happened. Never would have gotten caught. Never would have gotten caught. Ever. So the kidnappers are taking Jeff out to the Everglades to kill him. So the FBI's got to sweep in. No, no, they, they, I don't know if they were gonna. But they pulled his fingernails. But these, these were mean guys. They, these were not. No, if you're guys. pulling fingernails, you're already you're over that line. Yeah, you're, yeah, you, you're, you're gonna right. cut this guy up and throw him in the Everglades. Right. So the FBI takes it down, and of course, Jeff singing like, you know, he's tied up in the back in handcuffs with a hood over his head, and Jeff sings like a bird about the kidnapping, but nothing about the Lufthansa. So here's where it gets kind of comical. I, again, I feel bad for Jeff. I wish he were alive. He was really nice. He was a fun client, but he was just dumb. Right. So Carl's, right, we're all going to go to trial. Everybody's going to shut up and go to trial. There's really no proof. There's really no proof. It's a bunch of idle chatter on a thing, and a couple flips, we can beat the flips and we can win this at trial. I go into the FTC to see Jeff one morning and I see Carl's lawyer walking Carl's to the igloo. That's the rat room. Then in Miami, they call it the igloo because it's cold. If you're going to the igloo, you're going in for one reason, one to debrief. And you know debriefing means to sit down and sing like a bird and rat your ass off. Right. Whatever. Look at that son of a bitch. He's the lead. So the FBI contacts me and goes, look, Carl's debriefing against Jeff, but we know Jeff's the lowest common denominator. We're not asking him to be a flip, but we want him to flip on Carl's, and we'll show him the tapes of Carl's flipping on him. Now, I would do that, man. Look, if I'm going away for life, cooperating might be my only way out. I get it. Right. But if somebody's trying to throw me under the bus, oh, no, 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 no. You're getting thrown. No, 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 no. We're ride or die, or, you know, it's you or me. We're either ride or die together, or it's you or it's me. That's right. it. So the day before the FBI comes out to Jeff, his sister Cinnamons pleads guilty before Judge Graham. Pleads guilty, admits it, the whole proffer. You know, in a plea, yeah. guilty plea, the government says if this case were to proceed to trial, the United States of America would have proven beyond a reasonable doubt, and then they go through this factual proffer. Cinnamons says, I totally agree with that. I'm totally guilty. Find me guilty. Jeff's all excited because they're going to bring him a little sandwich. And Jeff's hungry. He's right. okay. So they have this little, I don't know why I think this is funny, but I do. <laughs> they have this little carton of juice called Jungle Punch. It's actually called Jungle Punch. Right. And it's got a red cartoon lion with a crown and the king of the juices. And stuff. So Jeff comes out and he, he, he's so heavy, they can't even put him in one set of cuffs. They've got to do like a bunch of links. Yeah. You know, six handcuffs because he's too big. They can't get him by him. So he comes out and he's all happy. <laughs> I go, look, Jeff, your brother Carl's is ratting you out. I've seen the tapes, he's ratting you out. He looks at the FBI and he goes, 
do I have stupid mother written on my head? And everybody looks and goes, yeah, you do. Look, your brother-in-law, Carl's, he set you up. We're, we're playing the tapes from the first kidnapping. and I mean, the second kidnapping about the first. No, they were real kidnappers. No, they weren't. Carl's paid them to do it, so we get them and we have them on tape admitting it. Right. No, Carl's would never sell me out. So the FBI goes, all right, look, he doesn't get it. Let, let's go to his sister. And the FBI's getting pissed because he's, he's completely just fucking straight lying. Him, right. Right through his teeth. Every word he says is complete prevarication. So the FBI goes, all right, we want to talk to you about your sister. Remember, the day before she pleads guilty. Right. Jeff says, I don't even know why you have my sister in this case. She's totally innocent. And the She's FBI, already pled guilty. Already pled she guilty fat, for everything, right? The FBI goes, that's it, you fat bastard. You're going back to FTC. And he starts clamping cuffs on him. But Jeff's not finished with his jungle punch. So he's like refusing to be cuffed, but not to be refused to be cuffed. So he's trying to drink this jungle punch. And they're pulling jungle punch. And he's going, Mike, help me, help me. All he wants to do is eat a sandwich in the jungle punch. That ain't worried about going to jail or nothing. I'm, oh, geez, he's a sad case. <laughs> so Carl's gets a 5K, Rule 35. And poor Jeff sits sentencing. Now everybody's completely flipped, which is Jeff. And you know, He's Jeff. still not believing that they flipped? Or is it at some point, does he realize yeah, they're... To this day, I, he's dead now, but I, I don't think he... Believe, I'm like, here is the tapes, bro. You're like, that's your brother's voice. That's your brother's voice. He's telling you, F- you. I paid you the first time. I'm not paying. He never paid, bro. Everybody <laughs> knows this. Your sister told you. Man, you guys must think I'm stupid motherfucker. Man. And he had this big tattoo down his arm. He liked that big... Stay puff marshmallow, and it just said El Nino. And that was his son. And Jeff did love his kid. Jeff was a loving guy. Jeff was not a bad man. And he would come to court when he'd see his son, he'd smile, and he had the big fat cheeks, so we would get like the slits for eyes and he ain't waving. And stuff's going on. He's about to get 30 years. He's waving to his son like he's just oblivious. So Judge Graham says, I'm gonna give him acceptance of responsibility which for your viewers, you know, is three levels off. That's a lot. When you start right. getting over level 20, three levels can become three, five, six, seven years yeah. real quick. He goes, I want you to tell me what you did with the money. He goes, well, I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in gold rush. I bought the girls uh, jewelry, everything like that. And then he wouldn't admit to being ripped off by the, by the strippers. Right. I said, if yeah, you have to tell the truth, who the f- cares? Right. He goes, I don't want the judge to know. I'm a sucker like that. <laughs> you're at your sentencing, bro. You got caught because of your own family. It's a lit. The cat's out of the bag, bud. Right. The cat is out of the bag, Jeff. And who cares what Judge Graham thinks of you? Do you want your three levels? Not you. Better tell him the truth. He said, "I woke up a couple days in a hotel. All my clothes were gone. My phone was gone. I had to wrap myself up in a bed sheet." And ask somebody to use their phone. How embarrassing is that? Just goes, okay, I'll credit you with that. I'll credit you with that. You know, they're trying to get the, the money back. Yeah. He tells them where the money is buried in the backyard. So they get some of that back. He, you're not getting it. You're right. not getting your money. You want to buy a lot of scooter pies? Yeah, a lot of scooter pies. Or you can get some time on. Right. What do you want to do, pal? We'll get you a lower level and stuff like that. And he just goes, okay, I want to know where that 180 went. He won't. Tell them the name of the Santa Maria priest. I'm like, look, Jeff, I don't know how to tell you this, buddy. I know <laughs> we have freedom of religion here, but there is no Santa Maria priest. It's a scam, bro. Right. Let me remove all that. Your Santa Maria priest has no mystical, magical powers now that she killed a chicken and has a ground up crow's foot. It's a scam, bro. Oh, it's a scam. Okay, the beads, it's all. He goes, no, it's real. I said, okay, we'll just tell him the name. He goes, what do you mean? I said, I don't know. Rosa Perez, yeah. Esmeralda, you know, Hernandez. What is her? Just give a name. Tell him the name. He goes, no, nah, man. That's, I can't. He goes, not only are you not getting acceptance, you're not getting a downward, you're not getting the, the lower level. And he whacked him out. And what, he didn't whack he, him out. Judge he, Graham treated him fair. He, he, he gave him low end of the guideline, but he gave him low end of the guideline. But he's, what was no, it? 20-something years. 
I don't remember, maybe 22, 20, somewhere in that, in that ballpark. I don't remember the exact. What would he have gotten? 15? 15? Oh. And if he would have told everybody it was Carl's idea to do this, he could have gotten out in less than 10. But he wouldn't. And I understand it. Look, you don't want to go against family. I get it. I get it. No, but no. Your family just rolled over on you. Your family set you up. Right. Forget about bringing in, whatever. Who cares? If you come up with a, uh, uh, if you hatch a scheme, Matt, and I go in with you, we're in for a penny, we're out for a pound together. I get that. And we don't want to flip on each other because you're my brother-in-law and you're my, I get all that. But when you know the whole reason you got kidnapped and the whole the million dollars you gave him, right. I'd be like, I'll tell you right now, that's whose idea right. it was. This is what we did. This is how we did it. This was the split, everything. And then he died. How, how, how long did he? I don't, he died years later. I, 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 I found out about it because there's a special on Netflix it's called Money Plane Heist or Money Heist Plane Miami. Right. And it said that Jeff had died. That's how I found out. Oh, okay. But I felt bad for Jeff. He was just such an easy mark. 